So welcome to this webinar on a sustainable development goal for culture, an introduction to the Culture 2030 goal campaign. We're really happy to be organizing this, given that this is a very strong focus of our work around the sustainable development goals and around culture in general at IFLA. It's also an area where we know that there's a lot of interest amongst our membership. And so it's great to be able to explain what we're trying to do with the campaign, who we're working with, what we're trying to achieve, what it will change, but I think most importantly, how it is that libraries around the world can get involved and hopefully use it to ensure the proper recognition of their role as partners, as drivers of development. In terms of the specific goals from our time together today, we're going to cover, uh, we're going to cover why we're talking about culture and development in the same sentence, why we see there being an important link. We're going to be talking about the place of culture within the 2030 agenda for sustainable development, why we think that that is not as good as it should be, why was 2015 arguably a failure, and the impact that this has had on libraries and on the broader sustainable development debate. We'll talk about what the Culture 2030 Goal campaign is and what we're doing right now, and then crucially, what is it that you can do? This is a webinar that is focused on anyone who's interested in advocating for libraries, their role in sustainable development, and also anyone broadly in, in, more broadly in the culture sector. I haven't introduced ourselves, which I should have done, so my name is Stephen Weiber. I'm Director for Policy and Advocacy at IFLA. I'm joined by my colleague Claire Maguire, Policy and Research Officer for Culture, Heritage and Climate Change Climate Action at Headquarters, and she'll be talking shortly. Um, it's always helpful, I think, to start with a couple of definitions, just so that we're clear that we're in the same place. Um, in terms of how we define culture, um, it's important to say that this is obviously, it's the cultural sector, it, it, it's those who are producing culture, artists, performers, and so on. But it's also crucially, obviously, cultural institutions, those that are supporting contemporary creativity, also those who are there to preserve, to safeguard and give access to the past. But importantly, it also includes our underlying cultures. What are the factors, the beliefs, the attitudes that are shaping our behaviours? I think what's important here, and I'll return to this a few times, so many of the issues within the sustainable development agenda do involve this necessity of changing behaviours and so sort of changing cultures. And the key argument is that, of course, if we don't, the best way of changing culture is through culture. When we talk about development, we're primarily talking about the sustainable development agenda, that which is set out in the United Nations 2030 agenda. And this is all about making sure that everyone fulfills their rights, fulfills their potential. It covers a whole range of policy areas, indeed brings them together with a common focus on how can we make sure that we're maximizing economic, social, environmental, and we would argue cultural sustainability so that not only can we live the best possible lives today, but those in future can do exactly the same. So to introduce, to get into the topic of, of why we make the connection between culture and development, there are crucially two high level ways of doing this. I think, first of all, that culture is a goal in itself. Cultural rights are a part of the human rights framework. The right to access culture, to create, to share, to be able to be part of the cultural community. These are clear human rights. And so, of course, it is entirely legitimate, entirely possible and entirely important to make sure that everyone is in a position to benefit from culture itself. But crucially, culture is an enabler. As I said, so many of the so many of the, the reforms of the changes in behaviours that we need in order to achieve the sustainable development goals have a cultural aspect to them and so they have a cultural aspect to their solution so culture is crucial there but looking beyond that clearly as we know and as you've heard so many times from IFLA libraries are essential actors in development and so the cultural sector it's a huge potential force for change a huge potential source of ideas of energy of imagination in order to make sustainable development happen to dig a little bit more into this, I'm very happy now to hand over to Claire, who will talk a little bit about the work that we're already doing, can making that connection between culture and development. Thank you, Stephen. Um, I think a really key aspect of this, of looking at culture and development, is looking at the transversal impact of culture on development. That culture, um, enjoyment of culture, upholding cultural rights, participation in the cultural life of the community, it can have so many 
impacts um, across the entire development agenda. And at IFLA, we are engaging in culture through this lens. We're looking at culture, looking at libraries as an aspect of the cultural infrastructure as being a critical aspect of upholding cultural rights, both for the individual as well as for the group, for social cohesion, for the exchange of cultures and living in a multicultural world. Um, in this role of in this role in societies, libraries have a very unique um, possibility to deliver this aspect of development, which we cannot achieve sustainable development without. So we, um, when we're engaging in the cultural sector, we're really bringing that um, unique aspect to the fore. And one example of how we do this is through um, the longstanding um, public library manifesto. We updated the manifesto in 2022 together with um, UNESCO's Information for All program. Um, this was a very close and fruitful collaboration, um, but the, a lot of the work that was put into updating the manifesto was done by IFLA's public library section um, in a very participatory process of looking at what is the role of public libraries today. Um, and the public library manifesto really reflects this idea of um, libraries as these hubs for cultural rights, for cultural fulfillment of both the individual and of society. It proclaims UNESCO's belief in public libraries as a living force for education, culture, and information, and an essential aspect of creating peace and um, through this sustainable societies. So in the last year since we have launched this update, we've been working both at the international level with UNESCO, but also with at the national and subnational level through our volunteers and through our professional program to implement the manifesto. So this really takes multi-level action. And IFLA is in a good position there to work both at the international level with our partners at UNESCO, but also to really engage at the national level through our professional program and through our volunteers to um, help promote this aspect, raise awareness of the possibility that libraries bring to development. I apologize, I muted it. Um, thank you, Claire. So I hopefully, I don't know, I think, this link between culture and development is within the library field, within the work that IFLA is doing, within our own documents, really clear. So why isn't it clear at the global level? Why was the document that was agreed in September 2015, the UN 2030 Agenda for Transforming Societies for Sustainable Development, why doesn't it feature in there? And what's the impact of that being? So overall, and, and I'm going to be drawing quite a lot on a piece of work that was commissioned through the Culture 2030 Goal campaign to look at what a future culture goal could look like, and, and we'll mention a bit of this there, but in there there's a really fascinating analysis of, of effectively what, what, what went wrong, why doesn't culture feature up there, and some of the arguments that are proposed for this are firstly a fear on the part of the cultural sector itself that it had spent too long in a silo, that for far too much time, culture was seen as something apart from everything else, not integrated. And so there was arguably the idea that we should have a, that, that it was important rather to underline that culture is a cross-cutting issue, something that applies across the United Nations 2030 agenda. A second fear or a second mistake potentially was in pushing for a goal that focused on the interests of the cultural sector rather than necessarily the goals that it had. And certainly throughout the negotiations, sometimes there was more of a focus on broader goals, sometimes a focus on specific sectors that might be trying to achieve them. So potentially that was a second failing. A third failing um, was the argument that potentially actually the voice of culture was not loud enough. New York, where of course so much of this was negotiated, is full of organisations, full of stakeholders, it's full of interest groups, each talking about their own issue, proposing that it's going to be the one that saves the world, the one that that resolves all our issues. And so potentially the voice of culture just wasn't organized enough, wasn't loud enough, wasn't consistent or coherent enough. And finally, there's always the risk that 
whereas um, the, the, there's always the risk that the interests of culture just it's dealt with separately within the UN system that unlike other issues which are where there's cooperation already between different UN agencies this wasn't necessarily this wasn't necessarily the case for culture now of course each of these arguments there are counter arguments or alternatives that could have been followed I think certainly we would argue and the culture 2030 goal campaign argues and of course I, I will introduce later um, simply having a goal doesn't mean you're in a silo and there's so many crucial issues such as education, such as climate action, such as fighting inequality and fighting poverty, which clearly are cross-cutting, which clearly do apply across the sustainable development goals. Of course, access to information under goal 16.10, which of course is so important for libraries, for IFRA, just being mentioned doesn't mean you don't become cross-cutting. And the focus on sector-specific asks, I've, I've already hinted at this one, but clearly, we focus on goals, we're not focused on who's actually delivering them. And so this underlining of why, what is the world we want to see? What are the real life changes we're going to see in people's lives? That's something that can be done, potentially should have been done. Certainly the existence of the Culture 2030 Goal campaign represents an effort to ensure that we do have a loud enough voice, that we are mobilizing all stakeholders, that no one can have an excuse for forgetting culture when it comes to thinking about what happens post 2030, but what happens now as well. And finally, there are some very welcome steps right now, which again, we'll talk about later, to see stronger engagement between UNESCO and the United Nations. Indeed, to the point that we've only just seen on the 5th of July, there's even going to be a session on cultural and sustainable development organized at the UN in New York. So those are some of the things that arguably went wrong that might explain. And so the result, nonetheless, and the document that we had to work with for the time being, the 2030 agenda, has, I suppose, arguably, no, it does have some references. It's not the case that culture is totally absent. There are references to the importance of cultural diversity as something that we should value, as something that we should promote, as something that we should reinforce where we can. But it's a long document, and there's only one or two references. Culture is referenced in goals in SDG 4.7, part of SDG 4 on quality education. But this is quite a long goal. It covers all of education, sustainable development, promotion of cultural diversity, and a little reference to the role of culture in supporting sustainable development. But it's still a focus on educating about the role of culture in sustainable development, rather than actually promoting the role of culture in sustainable development in itself. There's references to cultural tourism under the goal on sustainable consumption and production, which of course is powerful. And for many countries, it's clearly a great way of bringing together issues around culture, economy, sustainability. And of course, we do have SDG 11.4, which underlines the importance of safeguarding cultural and natural heritage. And so there is that narrow view of culture, that part of culture, which does arguably have its own goal. What this isn't obviously is a culture goal. It's not a big flag saying, Culture needs to be viewed alongside all of these other areas, alongside education, health, inequality, as a key area of action. And so what we've therefore seen is that culture isn't seen as an equal pillar of sustainable development. And I'll share a little bit of data about this in, in a moment, but it also means that far too often culture ministries and agencies are not involved in implementation of the sustainable development agenda at the national level. Often it sits within economy ministries, environment ministries, planning ministries, but there isn't necessarily, there's not necessarily a guaranteed place for ministries of culture. That's not to say there aren't a lot of really good examples out there. And um, if we look through voluntary national reviews, which are fantastic snapshots of how countries are viewing the sustainable development goals, how they conceptualize, how they think about how we implement the sustainable development agenda, some are doing a really fantastic job around the world in every region and one of the goals that one of the activities of the culture 2030 goal agenda is to actually identify to highlight these examples but it also means that in a lot of other countries culture is simply barely mentioned it's barely talked about sometimes it's even seen only as being a challenge only as being a barrier in order to actually driving improvement for example around gender inclusion and that, that's not a satisfactory outcome. We want to see culture and we want to see culture ministries recognised properly. Because of course, if we don't, we're missing opportunities. We're not giving the signal to the cultural sector that they are valued, that they have a role to play. 
we're not seizing those opportunities to use culture to change behaviors we're not delivering on those cultural rights which are a goal in themselves which are an entirely I don't know, which, which we need to be pursuing come what may so it's not satisfactory not to have a cultural goal um, I promise you some data, um, and this comes from some work of the Culture 2030 Goal Campaign, where we look to analyse the role, I don't know, the references to different dimensions, the different pillars of sustainable development. And so we try to compare the three more traditional pillars, so social, economic, environmental, environmentally sustainable development, and compare those with references to culturally sustainable development. And as you can see, just over a third so if you look at the total references in total just, just over a third each refer to socially sustainable development and economically sustainable development a quarter refer to environmentally sustainable development but barely four percent to culturally sustainable development and so this really shows that culture is being undervalued it's not being seen as such a key driver as this key enabler of sustainable development and what we want to do is change this so the Culture 2030 Goal Campaign, I said, this is here to build the case, to try and correct those mistakes, and, 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 and crucially to respond to that problem that we probably weren't loud enough, we weren't coordinated enough. The members of the campaign are global networks. I don't know, so many of them are sister organizations. They may be familiar to you from your work within, from, you, from your, your own work. So at the global level, we work with our sister organization for monuments and sites, ICOMOS. We work with our sister organization for music, the International Music Council, the International Federation of Coalitions for Cultural Diversity. A really important role is played by the United Cities and Local Governments Culture Committee. That's the logo you see for Culture 21. They are a collection of the people within, of mayors, of senior officials within local governments that really see, that understand the potential to drive development through culture. And they've been a really key player here. We also have some more regional players, so the Arterial Network from Africa, Cultural Action Europe from the European Union, and um, from Europe as a whole. And so we're really talking about net international networks that cover wide ranges of actors that have a voice, that have this important representational role, that also have experience of working alongside the United Nations, the African Union, the European Union, UNESCO and others. In terms of the goal, of the campaign. Firstly, is making sure that we don't see a repeat of that graph where culture is seen as being a much weaker, a much less important pillar of sustainable development. We want culture to be seen systematically as a driver of development because we believe in development itself. We believe that we cannot achieve the goals of sustainable development without that prior consideration, without culture being at the start and at the heart of development planning and implementation. More practically, we want to make sure that governments already even within the context of this arguably insufficient inadequate 2030 goal 2030 agenda act as if culture was a goal we'd like to believe that it should already be seen as sdg 18 on culture on cultural sustainability and so that governments act today that in their planning in their reporting in their implementation they are making culture cultural actors and cultural factors a part of what they're doing and finally, and it's probably perhaps a little bit premature, but we want to make sure that as discussions start about the post-2030 agenda, the 2045 agenda, or whatever it can be called, that it's crucial that culture has a prominent position in there, that whatever format it takes, there's some sort of cultural goal, cultural focus, that means that we don't repeat the mistakes of 2015. Crucially, and we put out a statement, especially in the context of the SDG Summit coming up later this year, and we'll talk about this a little bit later, um, we just need to make sure we do not miss the opportunity to recognise the role of culture as an accelerator of development. In this, um, we do come out a number of activities, but a crucial part of it is to work with those UN agencies, or work at the international level with member states of them, in order to make sure that we're on the right track, that they are seeing culture as a sustainable development goal already, that they're ready to promote it in any future agenda. And of course, a key partner in this is UNESCO. And on that, I'm very happy to hand back to Claire. Thank you, Stephen. So there's definitely been momentum at the international level towards recognizing and furthering um, the role of culture in sustainable development. And one of the largest um, recent 
developments in that was the UNESCO Mundia Call to 2022 conference. So this was the UNESCO World Conference on Cultural Policies and Sustainable Development. It was the largest cultural policy conference held in 40 years. It took place in Mexico City in September of 2022. And this brought together um, cultural ministers, uh, delegations from 150 UNESCO member states together in Mexico City to discuss how cultural policy can help us tackle global challenges. We looked at several large challenges that we are facing, um, and one of the specific discussion topics during this conference was on the role of culture in sustainable development. This was a huge talking point. IFLA participated um, alongside many of our um, partners from the Culture 2030 Goal Campaign in Mondia Cult and took part in these discussions around culture and sustainable development. And on the next slide, you'll see some of the highlights from the outcome of this conference, the Mondia Cult Declaration. This was unanimously signed by 150 member states and it lays out a framework or guidance for what cultural policy can do and what it can be and how it can help us, how we can help use culture and um, improve cultural policy to work for society, to work for sustainable development. So some of the key outcomes of this declaration were a affirmation of culture as a global public good. This means that culture can and should benefit everyone, and that our governments must strive to ensure that it does. Very importantly for the campaign, the Mondiacal Declaration calls for culture to be a standalone goal in its own right and a, a specific objective in the sustainable development framework. This was a very important step for the campaign and for the culture sector worldwide, as it is an affirmation of 150 member states that culture should be equal, it should be a part of sustainable development. Um, the Monday Cult Declaration calls for policy that upholds cultural rights, and it goes into a lot of detail, but um, the rights of artists, the rights of indigenous communities to access and use their culture um, to benefit their community, freedom of expression, freedom of artistic um, creation, the protection of heritage, both natural and, cult and cultural, um, the protection of heritage from trafficking and looting and destruction, and the role of culture and cultural diversity in the digital environment were just some of the many topics discussed that have an important role to play if we are to ensure that culture is a global public good, ensure that culture can um, help us achieve sustainable development. Um, finally, I've added there was a call to link culture and education, which for IFLA was very important in that it calls for a lifelong approach, both within schools and for people um, of all ages to learn about cultural diversity, multilingualism, um, and the arts, and, and tying this to the transversal impact of culture on sustainable development. There's a clear role here. So how do we now take a next step. Now we have this declaration. Um, it has shown that there is an international will to improve cultural policies role in sustainable development. So there's a moment, there's momentum, um, and we can work through UNESCO to help um, amplify this, to help turn this into actionable policy at the national level. So in the example that I shared earlier around our work with the Public Library Manifesto, that is, this is multi-level. So IFLA engages with UNESCO at the international level, calling for um, more action to make good on this declaration um, and also to amplify the role that libraries have. So we engage in the culture sector, but we also engage in the communications and information sector, in the education sector, and with different programs within UNESCO to demonstrate the very varied role that libraries can have. And in this, I want to stress that you don't need to 
work specifically in culture. You don't need to be a cultural heritage professional. There's so many things that libraries do that help uphold cultural rights, that have a role to play. So this is some of the work that we do engaging at, yes, UNESCO at the international level. But we rely on our members, we rely on our volunteers to work at the national level. So connecting to your national commission um, for UNESCO, to the people within your country that are working to take UNESCO's work and localize it and make it into policy that works at the national level. There's a role here to engage, to share this message, to say, we know about the Mondiacal Declaration. We know that there's this movement and what can we do here? And what are libraries already doing? So IFLA is working to help our members feel comfortable and feel enabled to do that for example, through this webinar today, um, but through a lot of our policy and advocacy work. And so with that, I'll hand back over to you, Stephen. Thank you very much, Claire. So I think this is going to be one of the really interesting steps going forwards because clearly a crucial step is to make sure that the, the, the chief UN organization focusing on culture is in favor of a goal. But what we need to do is convince everyone, because, of course, cultural people, people working in the culture sector, they understand the role of culture, just as we as explained as libraries, as cultural institutions, we know the impact that we are having, we know the difference we are making, we know the contribution that we can provide to achieving sustainable development goals. The challenge now is to convince everyone else. And so we do, therefore, also have a presence and engagement with the United Nations, which brings together, of course, all policy issues, which oversees the implementation of the 2030 Agenda. And so, of course, in this context, we are closely involved around the UN High Level Political Forum, which is the probably I don't know, which is arguably the main annual event, focusing on the progress we're making, the priorities we should have around sustainable development. This year is going to be particularly important. I'll get on to that, but. Throughout and pretty well from 2018, 2019 onwards, we've been working to gather evidence to encourage member states to think about culture, to try and support our members to get involved in voluntary national reviews and development planning, but then also to bring out those examples of good practice to show what's possible, to show what's good practice, to provide checklists and tools that governments can use to make sure they're not missing out on the potential that culture has to accelerate development. We've held side events in the United Nations. And so last year, for example, we were able to hold a side event. The previous year, we held one with members of the president of the General Assembly's cabinet. So we bring that message out there. We're trying to really encourage that focus, again, so that we act as if culture is already on the agenda. Of course, looking to the future, it's important to make sure that, not just us saying that, but culture starts to be reflected in some of the key texts, the key declarations that will inevitably provide a basis, provide a steer for whatever happens in future. A really important focus at the moment is the summit of the future. And this will be the conclusion of a very extensive amount of work that's been taking place since the UN 75th anniversary a couple of years ago. Through this, from this, the you know, member states came up with a declaration UN Secretary General has defined what he's calling our common agenda, which identifies a number of areas of focus, many of which are of interest to libraries, notably work around the Global Digital Compact or Information Integrity. And I encourage you to look at our website for explanation of the policy briefs around that. But culture isn't yet there. And so we need to try and change minds. We need to make sure that we don't make that mistake, that culture is seen as an area which is worth focusing on that's worth investing in already. <clears throat> a key milestone towards that is the SDG, the Sustainable Development Goals Summit, that will take place in September of this year. This marks the halfway point in the 2030 agenda, and it will be an opportunity at the General Assembly for heads of state and government to put their hands up and say, well, this is what we need to do. We're not meeting our goals. We're off track at the moment. This is where we need to prioritize. This is what we need to reaffirm. These are the accelerators we need to draw on the levers of development we need to draw on. And we need to make sure that culture is one of these. And we're already moving a little bit towards one of the action points that hopefully you, that our members will be able to take forward. So very quickly, and I've trailed, I've talked about some of these already, 
In terms of the sorts of tools that the Culture 2030 Goal campaign produces, a really key one is that, that, that hard work of analysing voluntary national reviews to go through the hundreds of pages of text to look at where culture is being referenced, how it's being referenced. Are governments actually bringing culture ministries on board? Are they looking to realise the potential of culture to achieve other goals? Are they looking to deliver on cultural rights themselves? And so we've been covering voluntary national reviews, also voluntary local reviews, looking at those references, identifying those great examples that then you as members, as volunteers, as citizens, can take your governments and say, well, hey, in this country, they're doing this, we can do it, perfectly possible. It helps, it's been seen, it's been recognised as that driver of development. The campaign also produces statements. We have, for example, produced one around the Sustainable SDG Summit, which I'll talk, to, we'll talk about further in a minute. And we've also, and I think this is a particularly exciting idea, um, at the time of Mondia Cult last year, we produced um, a zero draft of a culture goal. And this is really closely linked both to this reflection on how do we act as if we already have a culture goal, but also trying to make things more concrete and more realistic for when those discussions start about the post 2030 agenda. And the idea is to show that culture, culture belongs, culture fits, it's perfectly possible to imagine, to conceive of a culture goal within the context of the current 2030 agenda. And so it sets out the importance of cultural rights, of ensuring that the sector functions, that the sector thrives and is sustainable, but crucially, how we're making the links between culture and other goals, how are we making sure we're realising that potential, we're not missing those opportunities. And so really now, getting to that question of how to get involved, what, what hopefully you can do, and of course, crucially, how we hope that advocating around culture in the development agenda can support you and your advocacy, can form a part of your advocacy. Because I think in all that we do across IFLA around advocacy, the key goal is how do we make sure that the people who are taking decisions understand, see, value and activate around the role of libraries. And this underlining, making people aware of the role of culture and development is a really key part of this. So a key immediate thing, and we'll, we'll share further information about this when we post the recording of this webinar, is that we need to make sure that that declaration from the SDG Summit in September, that it talks about culture. We need a strong reference. We have already a very positive start. As Claire mentioned, UNESCO has signed up very clearly to this. The world's culture ministers have signed up very clearly to this. We see in the UN Secretary General's own report a clear reference to the report on progress against the SDGs for this year, a clear reference to the need to do more with culture, to seize that opportunity, to leverage culture for development. And so a quick and easy thing, hopefully, is to send a letter, to send an email to your missions in New York, to your UNESCO national commissions, to your development ministries, your foreign ministries, to make this point, to call on them to recognise culture effectively. We will also shortly be sharing information about uh, models for how you could set up a workshop. Maybe this could be part of your conference. Maybe this is part of a, a collaborative event with other stakeholders within your country in order to reflect on, on the Culture Goal Zero draft, on how we can do more to integrate culture into development policies, to realise that potential, to avoid those mistakes. And finally, through the Culture 2030 Goal Campaign website, and we'll share a link in the chat and on the page where we share this recording. Um, we will also we also encourage you to sign up for the campaign and you'll start to receive mailings, ideas about what's going on, and including, of course, how we are moving forwards and possibilities to take part to help shape the, the version one of that culture goal zero of that culture goal. So with that, we've come to the end of, of, of our content and I'd like to give a couple of minutes in case any of our participants would like to ask a question. Um, and to confirm, thank you, we've already one question in. Um, the video and the PowerPoint that we're using, the slide deck will be available on the IFA website as soon as we're able. So you'll be able to consult that and we'll also obviously include key links um, because clearly clicking to links from a clicking to links from a PowerPoint is not so easy. Um, I would ask, are there any other questions.
Okay. So I think what we'll do is um, firstly just say thank you very much. I think particular thanks to Claire. I think it's really important for me to underline that you know, Claire is Claire of all of the successes that you heard from the Mondial Cult Conference. Claire had a pretty key role in making them happen in representing libraries there incredibly effectively. Um, and so thank you, Claire, for your time, for joining this session today. Thank you to all of our participants for your engagement here and for your questions. Um, and we will look forward to sharing this presentation, to sharing this recording as quickly as possible. So thank you very much. And I wish you a very good end of the day. Thank you very much.